Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and a special update for you, sharing not only the seven stocks to watch in February 2022, but the most popular stocks you out there in the Bowtie Nation are holding. We're one month into our portfolio challenge on Stock Card, and I've gone through the 47 portfolios to find the stocks everyone is holding, the top stocks you think are ready to run higher. There's still time to create your own portfolio and enter the contest. It's totally free, and the top five portfolio returns win cash and prizes at the end of March. I'll leave a link to Stock Card in the description below. Click through and follow the 2022 Bowtie Nation portfolio to get notifications whenever I buy or sell from the list. Don't forget to use that promo code Bowtie Nation, that's all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. I'll be counting down to the most popular stocks among you out there in the community to one stock held by more than two and three investors. I'll also be adding three of these stocks to our 2022 Bowtie Nation portfolio. You know, we can't get started though without that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. The seventh most popular stock in the list, actually a three-way tie with 21 of the 47 portfolios holding is Tesla Inc, ticker TSLA, the trillion dollar electric vehicle company. Can we really say electric vehicle company though? I mean, yes, Tesla built its name on those cars and still does almost 47 billion in annual sales on those vehicles, but, but the valuation on this one is so much more. In fact, if we look at the $4,000 price target from ARK Invest by 2025, that's based on the company transforming itself into a self-driving ride hailing company. We see the 2025 estimates here for both bear case of $1,500 a share and bull case at $4,000 each. ARC is forecasting an increase in vehicle sales between five to 10 million cars with, with revenue higher to between 230 to $367 billion. But look at the difference in the bull and the bear case for this autonomous ride hailing revenue. If Tesla doesn't get that business started by 2025, ARC is saying shares could be only worth $1,500 each. But if it does get that started and books as much as $327 billion in sales, which would be nearly half the total forecasted revenue for the company, then the shares would be worth that high target of $4,000 each. Now, even on that bear case scenario of $1,500 per share, that's still a 54% return over the next three year or four years, which, which isn't bad. I feel like Tesla has a lot of other technologies like AI, logistics that, that aren't really being commercialized yet that, that could add to those revenues and push it up at least to that bear case target. Now, of course, for Tesla, the bears always point out that price multiple, trading at 24 times on a price to sales basis. The stock is definitely not cheap, especially compared to some of those legacy automakers. Here, you've just gotta ask yourself how much of that competition from the legacy car companies is gonna eat into sales and the profits for the electric side and can the company develop that ride hailing service fast enough for that first mover advantage? Analysts aren't quite so sure though, with an average target of just $947 over the next year, about 3% below the current price, but that's still a one-year target and doesn't reflect those future growth. Also in 21 of the 47 Bowtie Nation portfolios are shares of Apple, ticker AAPL, the nearly $3 trillion Cupertino giant. And now when you're looking at Apple, a lot of investors wanna compare it against other tech companies, maybe like a Microsoft, with its 14 times price to sales multiple, shares of Apple look absolutely cheap at a seven and a half times on the price to sales. But that's not quite the right comparison because Apple is so much more of a consumer electronics company. So you wanna be comparing the valuation and the margins against maybe something like a Samsung. Here, we're comparing it against Samsung's one and a half times of price to sales ratio then you might step back and maybe do a little bit more research on Apple to make sure it deserves those higher multiples without being too overbought. Of course, on sales growth of 33% a year, then Apple definitely has that tech growth stock appeal and, and does deserve some of the higher multiple. One thing you wanna watch for here is this three-year growth rate down to the bottom here at just 11% annualized. Apple saw a big boost in MacBook buying just over the last couple of years as people upgraded their computers to work from home. The big question then is whether it can keep up that recent pace of sales growth or, or if it reverts back to that 10 to 15% annual pace. The iPhone was a revolutionary product, but sales and volume seem like it's kind of reaching its peak penetration, which means phone sales might not contribute to as much as growth going forward. We see quarterly iPhone revenue in blue bars here, and the phone sold until the company stopped reporting that in 2019, and it's really been a flat picture for the last several years. Now that means unless Apple can revolutionize another product category, like a car or something, then future growth has to come from its software and services. 
Now here's some kind of a car is a constant rumor, but I think Apple Pay has a bigger upside, building out that side of the business into a payments leader. Analysts are slightly more positive on Apple with a $179 price target, roughly 8.5% from the current price. Their shares have traded as low as three times sales and as high as eight and a half times on that price to sales basis over the last five years. So the current seven and a half times sales ratio doesn't leave a lot of upside beyond that sales growth expected. Also appearing in 21 of the 47 portfolios and the first stock I'm buying in February, shares of PayPal Holdings, ticker PYPL, the leader in digital payments. And what I like about PayPal is it's developed into so much more than just a digital payments company, but more like an online bank. It counts more than 70 million users on its Venmo Digital Wallets app, along with Zoom, its international money transfer service, and its lending service. We've talked about that digital wallets theme on the channel before, and I think this is where the real long-term growth exists. ARK believes digital wallet users could more than double in the next few years, reaching 230 million by 2025 just in the United States alone. More than just that growth in the fintech stocks, though, is the potential change in valuation. On a per-user basis, the Venmo and Cash app are valued at between $250 and $700 for owners Block and PayPal, but that's just a fraction of the nearly $20,000 each customer could be worth when they're fully monetized into financial services and advertising. The valuation difference on the Venmo users alone here could triple the stock price over the next three to five years. Now think about it, the Venmo unit is valued at no more than $15 billion right now of PayPal's total $200 billion market cap. If those 70 million wallet users though were worth even a $10,000 each on that better monetization, that would be an extra $682 billion added to the market cap of this stock. As soon as PayPal learns how to really make money on this wallet app, those shares could take off. Now, even without this wallet upside, PayPal has put up 20% revenue growth in the last year and management set a target to maintain that 20% growth over the next five years. That takes sales to $60 billion over the next five years, which at the company's current price to sales ratio of eight and a half times, means a $500 billion company or a share price of about $408 each. And the big news lately has been the addition of Venmo as a payment method on Amazon, something that's gonna bring in more people to the app and grow that base of digital wallet users. Analysts have an average target of $262 a share over the next year, 57% higher from the current price. But I think that longer term picture is the real reason to buy and hold the shares here and this is actually one of my largest holdings in my own portfolio. The fourth most popular stock among investors in 23 of 47 portfolios, Salesforce.com, ticker CRM, and this is another one that I'm buying in February for our bow tie portfolio. Salesforce was a pioneer in that software as a service model and revolutionized customer relationship management. While it's still that clear leader in CRM software, it has since expanded into a conglomerate of cloud-based solutions in marketing, data analytics, and this is gonna put in some of the biggest growth themes over the next decade. It's gonna be in categories like artificial intelligence, remote work, blockchain, and cloud services that are gonna maintain that double-digit sales growth for years to come. In artificial intelligence, the company offers its Einstein AI software and its customer platform for dynamic pricing. It's a profit-optimizing system that is constantly learning for its clients. The company is also in AI data analytics with its 2019 Tableau software acquisition and gets the remote messaging predictive software used in Slack when it closes that acquisition. The company's acquisition of Slack also puts it in the center of messaging for that remote work trend. Management is estimating a total addressable market of $248 billion by 2025 and booked 26% sales growth last year to 25 billion. Analysts expect revenue growth to $46 billion by 2025, which would be 77% higher than last year's book sales. The one-year price target here of $311 a share is nearly 40% higher, but I think this one gets to as high as $400 a share over the next few years. We're getting into the most popular stocks with this next one. Held in more than half the portfolios in the contest, shares of Amazon.com, ticker AMZN. Now, investors usually think of Amazon as an e-commerce play, and it's true that the company books 83% of its revenue from that flagship site, but but looking at this company, you really need to be focusing on that Amazon Web Services cloud side of the business. Now this side of the business accounts for just 12% of the revenue, but 60% of the total operating profits. The cloud business is gonna be key, that key growth driver unless it can develop other product areas, so watch for strength or weakness in the cloud. Now that said, Amazon did make a push to expand delivery into international markets in the fourth quarter, and, and I think that comes through as a surprise upside to revenue in the near term. Beyond that, I'm a little concerned about the company's push into physical locations and groceries. 
you know, these just aren't that growth or profitable areas that are gonna help the company. And, and I think there's more risk to missteps here than the opportunity for growth. Analysts expect sales to grow at a 15% annual pace to $730 billion by 2024 after 550 billion this year. Now that puts the shares at just 2.7 times on a price to sales basis. And the average analyst target of $3,770 is nearly 30% higher from here. The third stock I'm buying in February, and the second most popular among investors, Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC, in 27 of the 47 portfolios in the contest. Now, besides buying in the Bowtie Nation portfolio, I also took advantage of the dip here to buy 100 more shares of my own portfolio at late last month. Teladoc is the global leader in virtual healthcare with a provider network that covers 76 million US patients and a billion member data points. It's covering everything from traditional telehealth to remote monitoring and next generation primary care. Now, obviously, the last two years were huge for Teladoc, like five years of growth in one, but the company was already growing at a pretty solid state. Membership growth has grown 33% annually since 2018, and the company booked nearly 15 million patient visits last year. Revenue doubled last year, and 80% of that is from recurring services, so I like the stability here even if growth for telehealth slows from last year's faster pace. Longer term, telehealth and virtual care is the future, but, but I think the data is really the undiscovered value here. Processing all that patient data for the analysis and research, that is worth a lot of money. And where just last year shares of Teladoc were the poster child for those expensive growth stocks, the sell-off has taken this one into really attractive territory. Through increased monetization and modest member growth each year, management has a three-year target for 25 to 30% annual revenue growth. That takes it to just over $4 billion in revenue by 2024 on estimates for $2.6 billion this year. That means shares trade for just 4.6 times on a price-to-sales basis, which is already cheap for a growth stock doing 30% growth each year. If it can get to that $4 billion revenue target by 2024 and a price multiple of, of even five times sales, that's a $20 billion company for a 66% increase from here to at least $125 per share. And I think even that is a conservative estimate based on that low price to sales multiple. Analysts have an average price target of $147 a share over the next year. And, and I think Teladoc continues to grow and dominate its market. And the number one most popular stock held in 31 out of 47 portfolios that's nearly seven in 10 investors, the Walt Disney Company, ticker DIS. Of course, the story here has been Disney's enormous success with its streaming unit, Disney Plus. The business has added 118 million subscribers in just two years, more than three years ahead of Disney's own forecast, and something that took Netflix almost five years to do. In fact, since that launch and the growth of over 100 million plus subscribers, Netflix has added just 41 million subscribers to its own base. Now, outside the streaming service, growth isn't quite as strong. ESPN is still the biggest chunk of value in its cable news network, though, though it does still own ABC and the FX networks. The theme parks have yet to recover, though could actually provide some support in 2022. Now, the fact that shares of Disney fell 6.5% on the day Netflix reported its horrendous subscriber growth last month really tells me that investors are starting to worry about costs and competition in that streaming business. Disney may have a good path to growth and leadership here, but it will come at a cost. And I'm just not sure that's reflected in this average price target of $194 a share. That's more than 40% above the current price and, and would take the shares to more than five times trailing sales, which may be cheap for a growth stock, but a little pricey for a media company. Now, box office receipts and theme parks should help support sales growth this year, despite that slower growth in streaming, but but competition could really eat into those margins on this one. Check out the 2022 portfolio on StockCard or click on the video to the right to see the 10 ETFs every investor is buying. The top exchange traded funds investors put almost a trillion dollars into last year. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.